Okay, so Assassin's Creed Mirage is launching in just under 30 days. I know it's mad how quickly the time has flown. And with the game releasing a week earlier, Game Informer, of course, released their monthly magazine issue on digital and, of course, in print, showcasing a bunch of new gameplay elements, story quests, and some side activities, as well as some information about why they chose Basim for Assassin's Creed Mirage. Now, in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys some exclusive gameplay from Game Informer as they have been releasing so much that's just cool to see and on top of that we're going to be going over some brand new information released from the game informer interview so without any ado let's get straight into the video so with the gameplay you're seeing on your screen now, it's all coming from Game Informer. A link to that article will be in the description down below. Make sure you go ahead. If you download the app, you can listen to it and watch it for free. It's just cool to see some actual nighttime gameplay rather than in a gameplay trailer. Possibly with the day and night cycle, we will be able to complete these certain missions at night instead of daytime. Hopefully this will happen. I mean, doing some side quests would be quite cool, but if you're having to continuously do them during the day, what's the point for stealth? Give us the option, do these missions at nighttime. Time. Black Box missions are also coming back to the game or Black Box Assassinations. So, you know, adding this other element of choosing day or night will really enhance the player's stealth experience. A couple of things that they also discussed in the Game Informer interview was that it was originally meant as a DLC for Valhalla and that Eivor was set to visit the Middle East. Now, we know that it was set to be a DLC for Valhalla for a very long time. However, I am glad they didn't do this. You know, it would have been such a weird thing to give us all this mythological DLC, which I, I didn't really enjoy, and then send Eivor off to Middle East to have a grounded story. It would be a bit frustrating. I mean, not for me, I would have loved it. But for fans that do like that mythological element, to then suddenly switch to this grounded sort of story, it would have been weird. Don't get me wrong, I understand why Ava would have to go there. After finding out, story spoilers, I mean, the game's not two years, but story spoilers <laughs> for Valhalla. We also found out that obviously Basim is the reincarnation of Loki. Basim is from the Middle East, so originally I believe Ava would have went there to try and figure out what was going on, why it happened, that sort of thing. But I'm just glad we're actually getting Basim in his own game. He was a really cool character and I'm glad we get to play as him again. We also see that Basim is going to wear a medal that indicates his rank within the Brotherhood. Not only will his robes indicate this, but having a medallion to showcase this different point is cool to see and on some of these images we can see it just hanging about. So with the parkour being seamless, players can go pretty much anywhere without going off the rooftops, which is amazing. I am definitely going to be doing this during my playthrough, trying not to get on the ground. Obviously we'll go to have to do at some point as from the story trailers we know that some parts take place outside of Baghdad so of course we'll have to you know get on the ground but you know parkouring from one building to another is finally back in an Assassin's Creed game and I'm excited finally play the game they also say that Basim climbs and finds his way through buildings in a puzzle like formation going back to the classic AC titles like AC2 AC1 of course and you know Brotherhood Revelations and so on and so forth until the RPG titles this is good this might indicate that we don't have a climb anywhere mechanic which okay yep yeah, that did work in the previous rpg titles but when you're going back to a grounded expansive city tall building sort of environment it's nice to have that puzzle and you know trying to figure your way whilst running away from the guards eavesdropping is also back and notoriety is going to be important as the notoriety bar can become full and basim can be chased by guards at any time now we do know that you'll be able to go out in the world of baghdad and take down these posters that will lower your notoriety Again, extremely similar to AC2, but we will have certain guards that will chase after Basim if his notoriety gets too high, adding another layer of challenge. And it kind of shows me that Ubisoft want players to go back to stealth. They want them to use these gameplay elements in a way that they haven't really been able to do with the RPG titles. It's great to see, and I for one am so excited again to get back into the game. Talking more about stealth, that guards can actually attack Basim during stealth missions in target areas, similar to you know the early games if they see you of course they're going to attack you and Basim can actually hide targets in haystacks flower beds and cabinets which I am glad is back in the game adding more to that stealth element and it's exciting to see now the contract characters that you meet throughout the world i.e the side quest characters can be accepted individually or all together meaning during your playthrough if you just want to go with one side character and that group of people and complete their certain type of missions you can do that without having to go and mess 
interacts with any of this other group. And then maybe on your next playthrough, you might go ahead and choose a completely different faction and a character to do side quests with. Or if you're like me, you just do them all in one go after the main game's complete. That is probably the best way to play it, I believe. We're going to want to talk a bit about the outfits and weapons and these upgrades to the outfits and weapons give you certain perks such as noise reduction and attack bonuses. Now, this sort of reminds me of the customization from Assassin's Creed Unity. In that game, it was sort of a bit RPG, less RPG than the previous titles, but in that, once you unlocked a certain piece of gear and item, you did get certain perks that allowed you to truly become the assassin you want to become. Some gave you additional health at the cost of stealth, and some gave you such good stealth abilities that your health was going to be reduced and your attack damage was, but you wouldn't need that because you're that stealthy, and I'm glad that's back in the game. Now, of course, in Unity, this was a big draw for players because of the co-op and online activities, but having this implemented into a single-player Assassin's Creed game after so many years of not having it and just having all of our perks for the gear be to deal with damage or lightning attacks or fire damage you know i'm glad it's grounded and back on the ground. They also say that some costumes are going to be quest specific and some quests will mandate a certain attire to be worn to complete. Cool, that, that, that's fine with me. You know, certain outfits, similar to what we had with the Ezio titles, when we were running around as, I think they're called minstrels, I think. You know, the guys that play the guitar, you know, or when we had to carry the chest through the city of Rome. You know, certain outfits require you to go get them to then be able to complete a mission. You know, it's good, it's cool. Definitely going back to the basics that I like. And talking about attacking and damaging standard attacks will actually just chip away at small increments from the enemy health bars so parrying will allow you to counter kill enemies similar to that of the previous titles now i've heard from loads of people that have actually had their hands on the games that parrying is something that players will need to learn straight away we saw some cool animations through the gameplay trailers and of course some in the actual gameplay i mean the stuff you've seen on your screen now but i do wonder if it's similar to the previous titles where you parry one and you can go and parry straight away to take down another enemy maybe not if you can i'm all for it but you know this parrying definitely allows a freedom of movement and attacks that i really like from the games and to have some finishing animations is great i, I was tired of just smashing someone on the head of our hala and then instantly dying so it's good to see that back in the game now of course this isn't it for the information tomorrow on the next couple of days i'll be also bringing you a video about why ubisoft chose basim as their next protagonist of course we all know why it's you know basim is a good character he's an actual assassin and players really liked him within Valhalla so of course that's why they chose him but there are some different elements that we're going to be talking about the game also releases very very soon in 30 days and because of this I'm going to be announcing my giveaway for Assassin's Creed Mirage now a couple of you subscribers down below will be getting the deluxe edition of the game as part of this giveaway all you need to do to be included is comment down below whether or not you are excited or not for Assassin's Creed Mirage make sure you like the video and of course make sure you are subscribed to be entered into the giveaway i'll be running this up until the launch of assassin's creed mirage so make sure you get involved with it guys and girls i hope you all have an amazing day and i'll see you in the next video